shook because I definitely already announced this like two weeks ago. Hey guys, it's V Renee. Welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, we talked tropes that I love because it was Valentine's Day time. We were all feeling the love. I wanted to talk about tropes that I love to see in fiction. Um, but we're sick of the love shit. It's March now, so we're gonna talk about tropes that I hate. The first one is uh, super hypocritical of me considering I'm pretty much writing a love triangle type situation at this very moment. Uh, but it is the love triangle. Like, it's gone the way of the beeper at this point. Love triangles are like eligible for AARP. Like it's really, it's done. It's outdated, it's done. It is the laziest way, uh, in my opinion, to inject tension into the plot. If it's slowing down, oh no, throw in a new love interest. Oh no, the relationship is actually healthy and like going well, better throw in a new potential love interest. Like it's okay to have unlikable protagonists, um, but that's the thing, like a protagonist, who can't choose between two people and instead strings them both along for the majority of like a book that's not endearing to me i don't root for that person i feel bad for the people they're stringing along uh let's be real i feel bad for the guys that this girl is stringing along because it is always a girl torn between two guys because that's a fantasy that we can sell to teenage girls it's never going to be um engaging or endearing to them to switch you know to have like a guy have two girls fighting over him that's like a nightmare for our target YA audience so like we're never gonna do that um but it's still it's so frustrating to me because in real life you would think the protagonist is an asshole and if you're trying to make the protagonist an asshole okay but it's littered throughout most YA and and not all of them are trying to make their protagonist out to be unlikable so I hate it <laughs> the next trope I hate is the chosen one trope now I used the chosen one trope throughout a couple of the first drafts of civil blood i mean i do have a whole group in civil blood called the chosen just hate the formula of like x is a typical normal person when they suddenly discover not only are they a y but they're the only y in the world that can stop the evil z because you know what happens when you use that formula? You get a whole book or seven of X going, but I can't be the chosen one, I'm just X. And then the mentor being like, the key is inside you, Luke, or like whatever the thing is. It's a trope for a reason because it's a hugely useful storytelling device, like big bad plus normal kid who's not so normal plus helpful mentor equals like YA gold, but it's, it is gold and it's struck gold and it's struck gold and it's struck gold and the fucking well is dry. Like the mine is closed. Like stop doing it. You can't do it in a new, like. <sighs> Figure out a different device. That's all I'm saying. The next trope is actually something I've been accused of in Civil Blood and that is insta love. Um, because hate to love is one of my favorite tropes, obviously I don't love the insta love thing and also because it's super unrealistic like yes i understand that books are fiction um but the insta love feeling does happen to you as a teenager often and it's just because your hormones are raging and it's really just like lust slash infatuation slash i think you're attractive type of thing it's not it's not the stuff that builds a whole book series so like that's why in the beginning of civil blood they're both attracted to each other but like they don't immediately fall in love because like there's obstacles in the way and like also they both have personalities that don't exactly gel do you know what I mean so I don't like a we saw each other and we just knew situation in books because it's like okay you just knew but then like how did you end up like it just seems like the author just wanted you to be together so you were and to me that's lazy the next trope I hate is going to shake some people it's the strong female character trope. And I don't mean, like, obviously I grew up worshiping strong female characters. I love Buffy, I love the Powerpuff Girls. I like well-rounded, badass girls and women. What I don't love is especially in like, I don't read a lot of this because of this reason, the why like fantasy sci-fi trope of like, I am a woman assassin and I kill people with no negative effects on my psyche and I don't like dresses because I am strong and I don't understand anything except killing or like piloting my spaceship or like being a cool pirate or like whatever like being a spy like it's it's you're just 
the reason I don't like this new like generation of strong female characters is because you're taking a man and you're putting boobs and long hair on them because you're taking away what make women more interesting to read about than men. Sorry guys, you're not that interesting to read about to me. I like to read about women because women are way more complex by nature. We're more empathetic and communicative than men are by nature. When you take away the very like core understanding of like femininity, you rob a female character of, or a female identifying character of the opportunity to grow emotionally and to be complex. You can write a badass assassin who is also like other things. I don't care that she puts on a dress in act three and the assassin she's been working with realizes she was beautiful all along and then all of a sudden she cares about her looks. like. That is not satisfying to me. I want messy, effective, sensitive, smart, dumb, callous, deep female characters. Don't rob them of their complexity for the sake of being badass. Don't turn them into men with boobs for the sake of like being cool or badass. Then just write a man. Like I hate that. If you look at effective, strong female characters, like. Hermione Granger, Buffy Summers, Buffy cried and had fun and was silly and was badass and fell in love and hated and wasn't that smart but was clever. Do you know what I mean? Like, like Hermione was super smart, a huge rule follower. She grew, like she had depth, she cried, she felt things, she fell in love, she hated people, she was petty, she was all different things. Allow your characters in general to not be archetypes, to be all different things and allow your women to be not just two dimensional stereotypes. Like, okay, I'm done with, I'm done. That one gets me. The next trope I hate is I changed my outward appearance by taking off my glasses or getting a makeover and now I'm worthy of your love and adoration because I look uh, conventionally more attractive. It's fucking gross, stop doing it. This next one is super duper personal for me and it is the manic pixie dream girl. I'm not exaggerating when I say that the trope of the manic pixie dream girl ruined my life in high school. The idea that like if I was dark and mysterious and like quirky enough that a silly like nice doofy guy who has nothing going for him would fall in love with me when I went to schools full of doofy guys who had nothing going for them that I was attracted to. Like that didn't help my anxiety or my eating disorder or like any of these problems that I had in high school because I thought they made me more dark and mysterious. I was okay with leaning into my depression because I thought that it made me more mysterious and more like Alaska from Looking for Alaska or Margot from Paper Towns. Like I was like, oh, these girls have problems and so do I, it's totally fine. Like, I would describe myself as boy crazy in high school, but in reality, I was just putting myself in the orbit of messed up guys because I wanted them to see me. I wanted them to think I was different and that I could love them and then fix them and move on with my life, leaving them different but better because that's what I'd been seeing in John Green novels and movies and TV. Like, I'm not blaming John Green. He did not make up the archetype of the man I picked a dream girl. This has been a thing for a long time. 500 Days of Summer was extremely popular when I was in high school and I really thought that was how things were supposed to be. It is a terrible example for girls. Women are not the answer to all of a man's problems. Women are not the key to fixing a man. Women are not responsible for fixing men. Women are not responsible for fixing anybody, really. Um, so stop fucking popularizing this idea that like everything's gonna be okay for me, a man. Once I meet a girl with purple hair and a dark past who's gonna leave me feeling different and heartbroken but more aware of myself and the world around me. It's not, it's not her responsibility. It never was and it never will be. Fix yourself, <laughs> like fix your fucking self. The last trope I'm gonna talk about today is the male equivalent of the manic pixie dream girl and that's the brooding jealous stalker boyfriend. Um, I do think that this trope is in its twilight years Get it? Because Twilight popularized the brooding, jealous, stalker boyfriend. It was like a double pun. Okay, no? And I blame the popularity of this trope on the same reason that Man of Pixie Dream Girl is really popular. It's internalized misogyny. It's, it's like 
women can't women aren't autonomous women can't really do anything for themselves we're not equipped to handle the world alone and so a man needs to provide and protect for us or we'll just fucking wither away and die like we're not equipped to do things for ourselves and it and it i think it's trying to do kind of like a benevolent god slash father figure thing um but now that i'm an adult and i think about some of those things it's way more serial killer than it ever was like benevolent like watching over you type of situation it it, it is it is not okay <laughs> and i think this is what bothers me the most is like when i was a kid i didn't see anything wrong with that because i didn't have like the the context as like a 13 year old to understand how fucked up it was um and that's super unhealthy that like girls my age were reading this stuff and being like that's super romantic that a guy would sneak into my room and watch me sleep that's super romantic that a guy would break a part of my car yeah you remember in eclipse edward took a piece out of bella's truck so she couldn't go see her friend jacob how romantic that he would do that so that she wouldn't put herself in danger. No, 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 ladies. No, 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 no. That's not romantic. That's not a nice thing to do. That's controlling as fuck. It's not healthy. It's not okay. Uh, it's what we old folks call a major yikes, a uh, major red flag, major end that shit immediately. And I'm just really glad that we're hopefully not gonna see too much of that anymore. I'm done screaming about tropes now. I make new videos every Wednesday. If you like this video, let me know. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.